Hey everybody, it's Rob, the Fat Pastor on a Mountain Bike from MTVMichigan.com. And today I wanted to take a few minutes to do an off the bike video to share with you my one year results of my health and fitness journey. Um, basically a year ago I decided that I wanted to lose 150 pounds uh, through mountain biking and changing my diet and exercise routine. So. I want to share those results with you and then I also want to give you seven things that I learned along the way. For those of you who are new to my health and fitness journey, um, the long story short is I'm 51 years old. I've been riding a bike my entire life but over the last say 15 to 20 years I have been plagued with either injury or sickness year after year that has really gotten out of hand and caused some kind of problems. So last year, after recovering from a broken ankle, at this time of the year, I got onto a scale and I said, I gotta do something with my, I gotta do something with this. So those stats were as follows. But I was at that point just under six foot one and 350 pounds with a 52 inch waist. So one year later, I am still just under six foot one and I'm down to 260 pounds and I have a 42 inch waist. So quick math for everybody. In one year on my 150 pound weight loss journey, I have lost 90 pounds and 10 inches off my waist. Now I still have 60 pounds to go, but I lost 90 pounds in a year and I'm really excited about it. Uh, just to give you some, some funny story, you know, losing weight costs money because I've had to buy all new clothes. So. I'm, that's a good thing, a good problem to have, and I'm excited to say I have that problem right now. Honestly, I'm so excited about that problem that I wanna just tell you a couple of fun things that weighing 260 pounds instead of 350 pounds have, has brought me. Um, basically, I was able to walk into a bike shop and buy a jersey off the rack for the first time in years. Another cool thing that happened is I was able to go and buy clothes in a normal size section, not the big and tall section. Those two things in themselves have been worth all the effort of this year. So let me give you a quick summary of how I was able to lose 90 pounds over this last year. And I'm gonna keep it real short, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Last year, I decided that some changes need to be made. Now, for those of you who know me, I really enjoy free riding, um, but I realized this, two things. Number one, I'm older and I've been injured a lot. So I found this out about free riding. If you're gonna be a free rider, it's kind of better to be in shape when you're free riding than to try and get in shape by free riding. So what did I do? I made changes to how I ride. I went back in and focused more on cross country and gravel riding and riding trails for more distance and, and, and health reasons as opposed to just going out and have a thrill of a ride. So that was one thing that I did. Um, the next thing I did was I didn't really change much of my diet. I basically currently do a whole 30 type diet as it is. Uh, so that didn't change much. Um, just eating whole foods. But what I did change um, is that I intermittent fast. And five days a week, I basically eat from 12 o'clock to six or seven o'clock at the latest. And in those times, you know, I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they consist, breakfast is simply a, a, a steel cut oats or a cold oats type breakfast with a fruit and a, and a, and a protein source, like a nut in there. Um, lunches consist of a lot of chicken and rice or uh, you know salsa type dishes or something like that where I'm having a lot of salad a lot of vegetables and you know a small protein source so dinners are also more of the same so th that's really my diet and like I said I switched to riding cross country the other thing I added was the minute gyms opened up from the pandemic I was back in them so um, five days a week I'm at the gym and I'm doing primarily weight workout because I can do the cardio at night so I do the weight workouts um, five days a week at three days a week more upper body and core type stuff 
and two days a week lower body hit and core stuff so that's really the extent of my day-to-day -day routine and um, like I said if you have questions I'll feel feel free to ask them and I will definitely answer them in a little more detail in the comment section so let's move on to seven things that I learned on this health and fitness journey that I've heard and I heard talk about but I've never experienced them you know until I got into this so the first one is motivation now a lot of people will tell you you know you got to get motivated if you want to lose weight you got to get motivated well the reality is is it's true you have to get motivated but you have to find what motivates you so like you know who I'm motivated to lose weight means something but what motivates you to lose weight what's your driving factor what are the things that are important enough to you to want to lose weight for so for me there were a few and they're just you know in 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 no particular order they're like this number one i want to have a long life so that i can share the gospel as you know i'm the fat pastor on a mountain bike that's one thing I do. I love to sit and talk with people, share life story, uh, share experiences and help people. Um, and you know, that's just one thing that motivates me. So that was one thing. Another thing that motivates me is my love for my wife and my children. I want to spend time with them. Now we're in the middle of a whole bunch of life changes. Three of my children, have all have moved out three of my four children have moved out recently so my son and daughter-in-law just moved out so my two daughters also moved out they got a house together and you know so I got these life changes where my role as a parent is shifting and you know going to visit and doing things it's different and I want to spend as much time with them as I can and I want to spend it healthfully because the injuries like I said, I've had a lot of injuries and so I've got arthritis and stuff like that. So the motivator for me was I wanted to be as healthy as I could so the arthritis and things that I deal with now don't get in the way and I can enjoy the time with my family rather than being miserable in the midst of it. So that was the other motivator. And the third motivator is real simply, I love to ride bikes. Like I said, I'm 51. I've been riding bikes almost 50 years. And I want to enjoy that as long as I possibly can. And at 350 pounds, it was really hard to enjoy it. I needed to do something to, to change. And so that was a motivator for me. It was the fact that I just loved to be on a bike and that was it. So the second thing that I learned along the way is discipline. Now, you know, dis it's obvious you have to discipline yourself if you're going to try and lose weight. And let me just tell you the ways that I did. So the first thing was the intermittent fasting. Forcing myself to eat in that window. You can do it. You can discipline yourself. And I guess that's the thing about discipline I want to say. Some people will say I don't have discipline. Well, you know, maybe I didn't either. But I forced myself to eat in that window. And, to, and I was able to do it. So five days a week, I eat in a, in a seven hour, six to seven hour window and it works and you'll get the strength to do it five days a week i also force myself to go to the gym at 4 30 in the morning i wake up and i'm at the gym by five five days a week you can discipline yourself so i guess i just want to encourage you that you can discipline yourself so the third thing i learned from this health and fitness journey is that you have to have a plan so like for me every year i would riding season would come I would hop on my bike and say I'm gonna ride and eventually the weight's gonna come off and it never did I mean I'd lose 10 15 pounds and gain it back and stuff like that because I never had a plan so here's what you got to do you have to do some research put together a plan set some goals in my case I set long-term goal and I used realistic numbers after the research so I said I plan to lose, you know, 150 pounds. I'm hoping to lose a pound a week. So that should take me about 150 weeks. Now, I was really, you know, that was my long-term goal. 
And then from there, I set shorter goals. I want to, you know, I want to try and lose this much weight by here. I want to try and do this. I want to be fit enough to do this by this point. You know, and as you know, I, I do things like the Fat Pusher Challenge where, where I challenge myself to ride as far as I can over Labor Day weekend every year. So like I had a goal. I had done 50 miles the previous year on a road bike. I wanted to break 50 on a mountain bike. And you know, so I worked towards those goals. I set short-term goals, long-term goals, and I built a plan that, that I could see through. The fourth thing I learned on this journey is flexibility. Now, you know, I just talked about having a plan, but you have to learn to be flexible as well. Because, you know, if you're doing a plan and you find out it's not working, then there's no point in staying with that plan. You have to alter it. So, like, be able to be realistic with yourself and take an honest look and say, I have done this for a month and this has seemed to work and this is not working let's retool it so be flexible with everything you're doing so the fifth thing that i found really important on this journey is ownership now you know all of these things lead up to ownership you know making a plan having goals having discipline etc those things all lead up into ownership but let's be honest, I mean, a lot of times as a big guy, I would make excuses for being a big guy. And that was wrong. That was me not being willing to take ownership. So I encourage you to take ownership because at the end of the day, you are the one making these changes. You are the one who wants the results. So the thing here is take ownership and make it happen. You know. I had to stop making excuses. It was really important. You know, like I said, I thought if I was riding, it would eventually come off. And I thought, well, I got injured, so, you know, I'm a little behind, but it'll, you know, I'll, I, yeah, yeah. Well, all those led to excuses and then getting, you know, struggling with being depressed and wanting to eat because of depression and things like that. You know, it, it you have to take ownership and just kind of, put your feet in the ground and say this far and no more. And then from there, once you take that ownership, all the other things seem to happen, you know, and, and I'm not talking about the weight loss, loss per se, but the discipline to do it, the steps, the, the goals to do it, they'll, those are all, all seem to happen. So the, that one's ownership. The sixth thing I learned along this journey that I found to be really important was to have a support network. So, you know, like I said, as much as you take ownership, you know, you having support around you keeps you motivated. Honestly, when I when I went to my wife and for me, it was a little bit of, you know, being humble. I had to say, honey, I have to make these changes. And I, you know, had to say to my children, I have to make these changes because that's what I want to do for my health. And I'm going to need your support when I'm weak to maintain what I'm doing. And honestly, once I found that I was humble, you know, once I humbled myself enough and I got a support network, I, it was a huge step for me. It was a huge bonus for me. And it really made this journey a little bit easier. Number seven is simply this. Sometimes life happens and you gotta deal with that. So what I'm saying is this, you know, sometimes things go crazy and you can't find that day to work out or you're just on the run so much you have to stop and grab fast food, something stupid like that. Here's what I'm gonna say to you. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off and start all over again. When you're a big guy like me, chances are You'll want to internalize, oh, I failed, and that'll make you want to fail again. And you can't do that. If you want to put your health in the line, honestly, and you have a bad day, you just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again. There's no other way to say that, you know, life happens. Sometimes you just got to go with it. And you, you okay, I lost that day. 
I start again today. You know, I lost yesterday, but I start again today. Otherwise, we, we tend to wallow in self-pity and you can't have that. But I guess what I'm saying is this, you know, for number seven, for life happens, what I'm saying is sometimes life happens, don't beat yourself up over it when it does. If it happens, it happens, and that's that. You can't change it. But, like I said, then once you get once you get over that, you pick yourself up and move on. But sometimes it happens. And honestly, when it happens, here's what I'm getting at, is you want it, you want it, if it happens, you can learn from it. Because then you can re-change your plan for, okay, if if an emergency happens and I have to eat on the run or this, that, or the other thing, I need to make these steps for those kind of days. So I just, I guess I don't want you to beat yourself up, but I don't want you to make excuses. So just learn when life happens. Okay. Those are the seven things that I learned on this journey along the way. Like I said, I, ho I hope they're helpful to you. It's been so exciting for me to say I'm down 90 pounds, um, you know, in a year and I've still got 60 to go and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, I'm still on the journey, but honestly, this is my one year status report and I'm really excited to share it with everybody. So with that, live the faith, ride it out, and I hope to see you on the trail.